This is wood, and in this video I'm going to transform it into electrode. But why and how would I do that? Basically, I want to make electrodes myself so that I don't have to buy them anymore. And I thought it was a cool project since there is only one other video on YouTube about it. How it works is that the wood is made from carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and a few other elements as well. The first step is to somehow remove all of the elements except carbon, because it's a pretty special element. Then for the second step, we will need to chemically transform it into graphite, which is surprisingly conductive. And finally for the third step, we will have to shape the electrodes from the graphite powder we made. Now that I am outside, we can do the first step and make a charcoal. We first fill our furnace with small wood at the bottom, to bigger pieces at the top. You can use paper, tiny branches or fuel like me to light it on. The method I'm going to use is called pyrolysis, and without getting into too much detail, the way it works is that the wood is going to decompose at high temperatures to give charcoal and gaseous product, which are going to escape. By the way, this is oak wood because it's quite dense. If you use pine tree or something way less dense, it's gonna make poor charcoal. And then we do this. Hell yeah. Okay boys, it seems to work pretty well, it's, it's starting to get a little good. As you can see by the flames, the wood is not done decomposing yet. You know it's finished when you don't see any more smoke coming out. And it usually takes between 1 and 2 hours for me with this furnace. But I think it can probably be done in less than 30 minutes with a real furnace and by using less wood. Just a quick disclaimer, the first method I tried didn't really work for many reasons, so if you don't care about the fail, you can just go to this time temp timestamp for the tools and method that it actually worked. Now we need to select the pieces of coal with the least resistance, and here you can see I have laid them in order of conductivity. Most of the source of information I have found said we need a resistance below 10 ohms, but I have tested with pieces up to 100 ohms and the result was exactly the same in the end, so I recommend you just use the best pieces you have, because it doesn't really matter too much in the end. Then I mixed a random amount of carbon powder, water, sugar and boric acid which I thoroughly mixed with the pestle. I also used some copper wire collectors, but it's not mandatory. I molded the electrodes as some big blobs with my hands, but turns out Two thick electrodes don't work for the next step. Then I dry them on the furnace before putting them inside for real. That's my dog. One of the electrodes sadly collapsed during the firing, so I was left with only one. And to cool it down, I tried putting it in water, but. <laughs> It was kind of a bad idea because it just broke in half. Ah, fuck. Okay. Well, sometimes it happens, you fail three times in a row. It is what it is. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Alright, so after failing, I came to the conclusion that I should try this method that already works to see if I can reproduce it at least. I watched the whole video, but I'm not going to go into too much details on the recipe, so go watch this video if you need it. Basically, it uses a specific ratio of sugar, water and carbon, and that's why when I tried something random, it didn't work at all. So this time I measured the reagents, used boiling water and got the right consistency. I packed the paste into a paper mold and used the copper collector again. This is the final electrode after the farming step. And as you can see, it's not really perfect, the copper is exposed on the sides, but whatever. Now let's test it with the voltmeter, and in a real solution for electrolysis. The conductivity is very good up to 4 ohms, and it seems to hold on well in water as well. But now, let's try to improve the recipe. 
To improve the recipe, I needed to find information on the topic. And the best way to find it was to go on a science forum called Science Madness. Basically, it's a bunch of smart dudes trying to improve the lives of chemists. They find new ways of doing reactions, extractions and more. So I found a thread on making carbon electrodes and I made a small 3 pages resume because it was fucking long. The first factor that plays a huge role in the electrode quality is the carbon density. Basically, ordinary wood coal is not really that dense, so it's less conductive and more brittle. A few solutions are proposed, like making it from pyrolase polymers, but it's a little complicated. So what I decided to do was to use some plywood, which is supposedly dense enough to be better. Here is the resulting coal after pyrolysis that I'm crushing into a fine powder. Right now, I'm just using a pestle, but I'm not sure if it's the best way of making it's still it fine. Pretty brittle, but you can you can feel that it's a little bit more heavy than the normal charcoal, which is a good sign. And after I crush it completely, I'm just gonna put it inside of a jar like this one. The next improvement that I wanted to do was to use another binder than sugar. Because yes, sugar is great, easily available and makes ok electrode, but it's still not the best out there. When you heat the electrodes, to cook them, as I say, the binder decomposes into carbon and gaseous products. The carbon just adds itself to electrodes and makes it strong. But the gaseous products, like water vapor, are trapped inside and makes bubble which is obviously bad for density. So the best binder would be one that avoids the formation of bubble as much as possible. Basically, a binder that only a small amount is needed to bind a lot of carbon powder, and also a binder that produces the best ratio of carbon to steam when decomposing. Alright, so now we've made the carbon powder from the plywood, and now we're gonna make the binder for the, for the carbon electrodes. So, I found this recipe on the Science Madness forum from a user with the name of Exabro Benzen, I think. Yeah, that, that was his name, and basically the recipe was a little original, and it seemed to have great results, so... The recipe is flow, 70 grams of wheat flow, 100 ml of water, and 15 ml of 15% hydrochloric acid. Alright, so I guess we're just gonna make some. Let's do this now. Let's just put it inside. Up like this, turn on the heating. After a few hours of heating the binder of the water bath, it's finally ready to be used. The recipe is not too precise, but I need to use the least amount of binder. So I first pour a random amount of carbon powder, and then I add in portions the binder until the mix feels good. Also, boric acid can be added in a small amount, because it makes the whole electrode more conductive. I'm not gonna explain how, because it's a little bit complicated, but make sure to add a pinch. Now, I started to pack the paste in some PVC tubes I've made. I'm using this sort of rod to pack it very tightly to avoid air pockets at a maximum. I made three tubes from PVC pipeline and some corks as always. Both the corks and the PVC are going to burn in the fire and you can also use some other plastics, paper and maybe metal as well. Alright, so in the end we have our three electrodes. Oh, oh fuck. And I'm gonna weigh them just to be sure that I compacted them pro approximately the same amount. Alright, so the first one is, hold up, you can't see. 71 grams. 70 grams. Oh, that's pretty good. One gram difference is pretty good. This one. 70. Wow. Hey, yo, boy, that's pretty good. Damn. I'm surprised. I didn't knew. I didn't knew I would be so accurate, but that's pretty good. Nice electrodes. All right. So I just made a little support for the carbon electrodes, as you can see right there. So I'm gonna hang them, you know, in the fire. All right. So let's take a look at the electrodes now, shall we? As they say in English. Okay, they don't seem to be too brittle for now. They seem to be very hot. Okay, they didn't broke. <laughs> I mean, they are bendy, but they do look not too bad. Here are the electrodes after some cooling time in the soil. I should have used the bowl to protect them from the oxygen while hot, but as an absolute fool, I used the dirt. Whatever. Anyway, they broke while cooling, and they are quite surprisingly not that dense. And I don't really know why. I'll test different types of charcoal in the future because I think that was the issue. The good thing though is that they're quite solid despite not waiting much. So I'm going to test them in the lab to see if I have succeeded. Alright, so now let's test the conductivity. Fuck. Let's test the conductivity of the two electrodes we made. 
hopefully they're still not too bad even though the electrodes look bad maybe the conductivity is great i don't know all right hopefully you can see on camera yeah i think you can see better than me even <laughs> so let's take the first smaller one items okay so okay 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 so the conductivity is actually quite good damn that that's good actually okay 13 11 10 6 5 4 ohms okay we, we, we've got to a little bit less than 5 ohms that's crazy that's nuts 4 3 ohms okay 3, three and a half ohms okay so that's that what the fuck that, that's actually goddamn good like crazy good what the hell hmm okay so the binder might work then because the binder or, or is it the charcoal that doesn't work so now i'm in the forest and i've collected some tree sap pine pine tree sap so basically i just use this rock you know to like chop off like here like with the rock chick, chick, chick. and I put my ball under it so that's all I got today I'm not gonna bother get more of it that's fine enough for me and I'm just gonna head back what we're gonna do now is prepare um, a coating and this coating will be made of resin as you can see the resin which I've which I've uh, picked out of the woods <laughs> I have quite a bunch of it and I might use all of it because you know if I make more electrodes in the future I kind of want to have some more resin but the resin needs to be treated so first off we're gonna pour everything inside of this beaker the hot plate is not hot yet don't worry and what we're gonna do on the hot plate is boil off all of the um, um, how do I say like I don't know residual solvents or light solvents in water so basically everything that boils under 100 degrees the boiling pot of water is gonna escape because we don't want that basically it's also gonna melt the resin, make it a little bit better. If there are any impurities, like you know, wood shards or things, we can filter them. And after some time, it looks like this. The light vapors are boiled away, and we are left with this paste, which is gonna solidify upon cooling. Now that it's cooled down and solidified, I pour the water, and we're gonna add the ethanol and turn on the hot plate for a mild heat. When we have a good solution, we can dip the washed electrodes fully in and out. So again, yeah, the final step is just to dry them on the hot plate. Uh, Alright, now let's test the electrodes. Hold on, my camera. Yeah, basically I just did the electrodes badly, but as you can see, they, they do work. Even the right one has some oxygen. The right one makes oxygen, the left one makes hydrogen. This is why we see more, more gas on the left one. And yeah. Okay, so, they... so just as a comparison, here is a real carbon electrode, a real carbon rod that you can find on, on the internet. And I'm going to show you how different it is. I have replaced just the anode, the oxygen making one, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I am. I don't fucking know about electrodes. I'm not a, I'm not a real, real electrochemist, you know. Yeah, see? Ah, now it's working. Okay, so as you can see, the right one works better than the one we made, but this one is absolutely non-porous, and the one we made is very porous. So I would say they, they probably do, do, do well. Like, both of them are pretty good, I suppose. Okay, so this is actually only the first episode of a series I want to do, because the final objective is to maybe, hopefully, make some perchlorates from wood, you know, wood electrodes, and hopefully we're gonna make some perchlorates with that. So, yeah, see you in the next video.